God, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, oh God, for your mercies that have followed us throughout the day. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you, oh God, that you have set an example for us. We thank you that you are a creative God and you have made us in your likeness, oh God. Father God, we bless your name for the Blood Experience Church. We bless your name for every entrepreneur, every creative every person with a passion project, every enthusiast, we lift them up before you, oh God, and we thank you for um, the leadership that we have at the Double Love Experience Church. We thank you, oh God, for this time to study your word together. Open up the eyes of our hearts, keep our ears, oh God, to receive what you have prepared for your, your people on today. Lord, we bless your name and thank you in advance for all of these things. We pray this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Yeah, well, welcome. Good evening, everyone. Is the screen okay? Hello, welcome to Tuesday Night Bible Study in person. Um, in person, Bible studies is um, we're, we're happy about that. We're excited because um, we're having a virtual month as the Double Love Experience Church, but today, as well as this Friday, the 10th. Is opportunities for us to come together as well as the 21st. The 21st is our next Bible study for tonight <laughs> and this Friday also. We're coming together. So um so happy to spend time with you all on this Tuesday evening. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with the double L experience. So thank you for that. Um welcome to Bible study. Bible study today is this series during this month is specifically for my creatives, those who have a bubbling inside of them, the burning bush in their belly that won't be um quench this is for y'all to make sure that um on this journey of being a creative and producing and bringing things to life that you reclaim your rest the title of today's bible study is reclaim your rest some folks reclaim time on this bible study we are focusing on reclaiming your rest um and today we're going to focus on hebrews 4 chapter 1 to I'm sorry hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 to 10 everybody hear me okay yeah. <laughs> yes. i'm so used to virtual it's like can you see my screen um okay let's see the next slide so just a little bit about me before we get started so my name is minister evelyn jean francois born and raised in brooklyn new york daughter of Haitian immigrants um and my creative journey started in 2014 um after a season out of undergrad I looked up at the sky and I was like, God, you did not. I, at the time, I thought I was going to be a journalist. And I was like, God, how can I be a journalist if all of these things are happening around me, keeping me from, from achieving that goal? And um, out of that moment of pleading with the Lord, I, the Lord gave me her neck of the woods dot com. Her neck of the woods is my baby. It's my blog. It's my brainchild. And it highlights all things beautiful, inspiring and relevant. And from 2014, from media coverage to style and inspo to Bible studies to travel content, all types of things from 2014 to now. That's my baby girl. Um, 2014 to 2016, I worked on a collect of young a collect called Young Black Brooklyn um, for digital production. And then 2016 to 2018, I worked as a social graphic designer for the Lifestyle NYC. 2019 to 2021, I was a host and a content creator primarily. 2022 to the present, uh, I am the co-founder, that co-founder of the Dinner Party NYC Inc. And our next event is Thursday, March 30th. It's a luxurious dinner party for creatives, for entrepreneurs. Uh, Pastor Gabby was on our inaugural panel last year and it was such yeah. a lovely time together. Um, 2022 to the present day, I am the digital minister at the Double Love Experience Church. And also 2022 to the present, I am the creative director of the, the co-creative director of the Fine Wine series. Um, future goals that I'm asking the Lord about uh, is to get into programming. I currently work at the Apollo Theater and God willing, my career will continue to develop that way um, through programming. So that's a little bit about me. So from 24th, it's almost, it's almost been 10 years of my creative journey being <laughs> this creative person. Um, I think as a, as a child, I mean, outside of stick figures and little doodles, I never thought of myself as a, a creative, but living this dream as elaborately as I am, um, absolutely. I praise God for what he has called me to and how he has called me to express myself and help others think and receive and do their own thing. So Amen. praise God for that. Amen. So today, if you have your Bibles with you, um, we will get into Hebrews chapter four, verse one to 13. Uh, and it's titled, The Rest God Promised. 
I will be reading from the new revised standard version. I love the Bible book. Come on, Bible. You know, I put this because my other Bible is so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> the one that I got in, I'm going to date this. 2000. And just 2000. My, my, my. Wow. <laughs> oh. And I was like, this is a lot of ones. I'm like, <laughs> day, I actually <laughs> have that one from like so yes. I, that, that Bible holds it. Now the leather is good. <laughs> yes, <okay. laughs> um, We are going to read Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Um, to give the church a few minutes to pull it up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's just start doing the Bible app, though. I used to have that. It's more toward the action. No, I said it's a one for the old name. Is in the New Testament. That's so, what I thought. It's a one for two. Listen, I'm gonna read it. It's okay. I'm like, mm. past Matthew and them, past Romans and them, past Acts and them. Okay. I don't know what comes before Philip. Maybe pick up all the Bible scholars who know the orders of the books just yet. I'm not there yet, but we're rooting for it. We're all gonna get there. Right. Hebrews four, verse. Let's get started with it. <laughs> Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest is still open, let us take care that none of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For indeed, the good news came to us just as to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed are entering that rest, just as God has said, as in my anger I swore, they shall not enter my rest. Though his works were finished since the foundation of the world, for somewhere it speaks about the seventh day as follows, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this place it says, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains open for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter it because of their disobedience, again he says, he sets a certain day today. Saying through David much later in the words already quoted today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not speak about a later, uh, speak later about another day. So then, a Sabbath rest still remains for the people of God. So that the, so for those who enter God's rest, also rest from their labors as God did from His. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one may fall through such disobedience as theirs. Indeed, the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. 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 So throughout this chapter, chapter four, verses one to 13, there's a rest that I have is speaking about and as creatives i chose this text only because there's always a need a requirement a desire a expectation to do there's always something that needs to get done there's always an edit that needs to be made the deck always needs an edit <laughs> there's always a post that has to go out there's always something that's got to get recorded there's always a meeting that needs to be scheduled um and i think we have allowed rest to become optional on our journey and it's absolutely not so before we get any deeper i just wanted to ask the room what kind of relationship do you have with rest mm -hmm. and how would you describe a healthy relationship with rest mm -hmm. i'll go first uh what relationship do i have with rest uh when it comes to like physical rest i don't get my eight hours um it's to a point where I try my best to get at least six hours when it comes to closing a laptop and claiming rest from my work. Um, it's easier said than done. I have a lot of guilt for rest sometimes. It's just like, well, you know, that needs to get, it's a lot of guilt, but I'm, I'm working past that. Uh, I think a healthy relationship with rest is one where we meet often. <laughs> um, where we meet one that's already been kind of like allocated, not on some like, oh, I'm just going to rest now and it wasn't scheduled. That's kind of where I'm at. I think that's a healthy relationship with rest. What about y'all? I feel like when I'm not on the go or traveling, 
But I, I'm like really big on rest. Like I'm big on my eight hours. I won't say I'm a cranky person, but it doesn't allow me to flow and just like do what I need to do. So like I definitely make sure I make the time for stress. Um, I think though in those seasons where you have just way more demand and like I said, if I'm traveling and then you know I'm doing a lot, like I just came back from Ghana where I did not rest. <laughs> <laughs> like, but on average, when I'm not in those seasons, like I, I like to sleep. I, I always say I have to get paid to sleep. Oh, praise God. I love rest. <laughs> it's probably bad because um I've gotten to a point where sometimes resting allows me not to address what really needs to get done. Not, if anything, it's like more of a guilty thing. So mm-hmm. now when I am, you know, abusing the rest, I'm like, you sure you need to be doing that? I think the more we grow and the different capacities that we're in, the idea of like the demand of what we were expected to provide kind of changes. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't adapt to that, um, you, you'll put yourself like on this hamster or this, you know, the wheel, the wheel, just like, I need to do. And it's just like, maybe this is just not your space. Like, maybe you should just let it be done. And you walk in and you're like, wow, like, what that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I do this. <laughs> you know, like, even today, like, I was like, oh, I just feel like my hour of time with God. And I knew I was coming to this. I said, mm, maybe not an hour today, but I had Don't they 30 like minutes before, well, to be exact, 36 minutes before I was going to get on a working session with one of my friends. And a, 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 a sermon comes up for 24 minutes. I said, mm-hmm. I mean, you'll make it done if you want the it. Was it was back then. And I was just like, I can see after okay. this sermon. <laughs> I did. It was just like little things like that where. I was rest, not resting, but I was just having my lunch, taking my time. I was just like, I just should be doing my time with God right now. <laughs> That's what I wrote down. <laughs> so, you know, it was just like knowing that there is promise for you or like there's always a play in place for you. So maybe you should listen to your body and be like, you know, maybe you're not your best. Yeah, you're talking good. That's yeah. the only thing I can say with rest because I'm the advocate for that. I don't play with the rest. Mm-hmm. I don't like looking like, oh my God, like looking at my skin like, girl, you look scary. <laughs> you know, like. There's always that one person who loves you who will let you know. Yeah. That you look scary. Yeah. <laughs> I thought people will tell me that. I'm like, ooh. I just skin. Yes, I'll go first. Um, so I think, you know, I think about the Genesis creation story. God created and it was good six days, seventh day, God rests. And I think that that is what I believe is a healthy rhythm with rest. I can't rest if I know that something that I was supposed to produce, I've not produced. Mm-hmm. So what I love about the creation story is that God is working, right? And then decides, I've, I've done what I need to do. And it was good. <laughs> and today, yeah. So and I'm going to rest good. today, yeah. right? So I think that there is, for me, a healthy relationship between um having my goals of what I need to get through. Yeah. Um, and part of the reason why we had a heart for this kind of Bible study and why we wanted to prioritize it is because we also are creators and we understand how creators move, right? And creators always have something else that we get to, right? Um, and so I think that a healthy relationship for rest for me is having a realistic list of what I need to get to and then resting after I've done that, because otherwise my rest is, is not, it's not pure rest. It's disturbed rest. Mm-hmm. I'm laying down my mm-hmm. mind's gone. Great. I'm, yeah. I'm waking up more stressed than I was when I laid down because I, you know, that's what I see. But when I think about the creation story, God probably could have created days one through six in one day. Like if he really wanted to, he didn't have to take one day for this, one day for that. So I think there is still wisdom in the fact that even in the creation story, God is pacing himself. Mm-hmm. And so, so I think that, yourself. yeah, so I believe that even if you have a set of things that you need to get done, pacing is critical, right? So even in those that God said it's good, that, you know, there's there's rest there after God says it's good, and there's one full day of rest at the end of that week, mm-hmm. right? So on a personal level, um, I try to take Mondays. Um, now, Evelyn's a former fellow of ours, so she knows that on Monday nights, we would have our fellows, but apart from that, I would really keep my day um, as clear as possible. Uh, and um, 
I, I do therapy on Mondays and, and I take care of me on Mondays. Mm. And then I use my Monday to help for myself. But um, yeah, but I have to, my rest has to be in response um, to how I've been able to kind of show up. Otherwise, it's not true rest for me. That's real. Yeah, I like that. It's a so rich. <laughs> I have a combative relationship with him, uh, and that is tough for me to like relax and to actually rest. Uh, so I, it is not because I want it to be that way. It's just because I have difficulties resting to the extent that I like. And so uh, where I have landed is um, there's a passage of scripture that talks about praying without ceasing. So I try to think of having a Sabbath paradigm kind of throughout the day so that um, each moment, each experience I can take as an opportunity to rest. And so it may be writing a poem, it may be leaning into breathing before a meeting where people are going to I try to do it like those emergency moments. Like when I get an email and I know somebody is out of pocket. Sabbath. <laughs> hit the Sabbath. Yes, hit the Sabbath. Hit the Sabbath. Like, oh, that's good. We got to say that. Uh, that's good. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. That's what helps me. Living at rest. Mm. Because getting rest each day is I love that. I love that because also not waiting for a Sabbath, but you give yourself. So you know what it's not. Hit the Sabbath. I like that a lot. Uh, that's good. Um, so what does scripture say about rest outside of the text that we read for I'm walk us through the book <laughs> through, through Hebrews? Um, the Bible it's, it's it's a lot about rest in the Bible. Um, but I specifically chose these. You'll you'll it'll make sense a little later, but Matthew 11, um, verses 28 to 30, come to me. This is Christ speaking. Come to me, all who all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light, saith the Christ. Psalm 4, 8, I will take my rest on my bed in peace, because you only, Lord, keep me safe. Genesis 2, verses 2 to 3, by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested for all, from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Mm -hmm. um, and Isaiah 58, 14, keep the Sabbath day holy. Do your own interests on that day, but enjoy the Sabbath and speak of it with delight as the Lord's holy day. Honor the Sabbath and everything you do on that day and don't follow your own desires or talk idly. So this is what this, this is what scriptures say about rest. And um, I'm most familiar with Matthew 11 and Genesis 20, Genesis 2, um, Psalms 4, I kind of read in skimming, but when I had to think about the um, context of today's Bible study, I, I was like, you know, this is also like, taking the time to lay down, as we had saying about early, it's like, yeah. this is also rest. Um, and Isaiah 58 about keeping the Sabbath day holy. Um, and like PG described, like Sabbath is not Sunday morning for everybody. It can't be, especially clergy folks, you know, not, <laughs> not the clergy. So whatever, you know, whatever day you choose or whatever button you have at the ready for Sabbath, this is what you do with it. You keep it holy and all these other things that we'll get into. But this is what scripture says about rest. Let's get into what the culture says about rest. Now I will preface this, that it was actually a little difficult for me to find, um, you know, we all about black lives here at the Double Love Experience Church. So it was kind of difficult for me to find like, texts about or documented texts about rest from some of our favorites like the Dwayne Morrison's the Baldwin's Baldwin was like there is no rest in America I gotta go he went to France mm -hmm. so I was just oh I, I have to point out that it was actually a little difficult to mm -hmm. find what the culture says about rest because the culture does not honor rest at all I was even looking at the, the like, Diddy's and the Sean Carter's and the Beyonce's and they're like sleeping you dead and I'm like, we're not teaching that here at the Devil of Exchange Church. That's not what my Bible says. Um, but this is this is what I could find about um, what the culture says about rest from the words of the late great Maya Angelou out of would it take nothing for my journey now? She says, every person needs to take one day away, a day in which one consciously separates the past from the future. Jobs, families, employers, and friends can exist one day without any of us. And if our egos permit us to confess, they could exist in, they can exist eternally in our absence. 
Each person deserves a day a week in which no problems are confronted, no solutions searched for. Each of us needs to withdraw from the cares which will not withdraw from us. Mm. And the uh, word is from the greatest. Withdraw from us. And then the greatest, Muhammad Ali said, rest, but never quit. Even the sun has a sinking spell each evening, but it always rises the next morning. At sunrise, every soul is born again. Mm. So I included these um, only because I think it's important. And the double love is all about popular education. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to make sure I stuck it in here. But um, what jumped out to you jumped out to me, PG, about each of us needs to withdraw from the cares, which will not withdraw from us. That that <laughs> you're putting language to I'm not addressing that right now because I am at rest and I think um especially for young for night young black women especially having being having the liberty or the agents to be able to say like no I'm not I'm not doing that right now we don't have that often I didn't see my mother take it often I don't see my sister take it often it's just not something that is um I guess repetitive in my experience, and I know everybody's black experience, but rest is not something we're always afforded. When you're poor, when you're living in certain conditions, we ain't got time to fall asleep because there's always something to do. Um, but here we are given permission. The word gives us permission, but also from our elders and ancestors, they give us the permission as well to withdraw from the things that will not, they always gonna be, <laughs> that's what my age was saying. So I just wanted to include that as well, what the culture says about rest. So let's get into it. Let's get into God. Right, because I love the Lord, He heard my cry. Um, but I think God, as the creative God, is the way I, I chose three words, and I want you guys to also do this as well. The three words that I chose to describe God, the creative, is intentional, multifaceted, and sensual. When I think about intentional, I think about um, when in the book of Ezekiel, I didn't include it in here, but in the book of Ezekiel. God gives Ezekiel a bunch of instructions. He's like, lay on your side for 40 days. And this 40 days represents the 40 years that the Israelites were disobedient to me. And then he says, lay on your other side. You're going to be laying for 390 days. So like every, a lot of the things that God instructs the people that he called in his word, it's all for reason. It's not these random words. It's not these random num numbers. It's not these random quantities. It's always what, what if, even if it happened centuries before you, you are sticking to this, even when you think about Jesus and his lineage, from David, like, God knew what he was doing. He always against you doing. Even if, even if we don't see the Jesus's lineage as being something creative or the way he commands Ezekiel or whatever, whomever as creative, just because God is creative in what he's doing, it all has some sort of intention. When I think about God as well, I think about him being multifaceted. When he was off, when he was um, issuing the plagues to the Egyptians, it's not like he just sent like thunder for ten days. Like he <laughs> had a little variety. He right. had the locusts. He had the, the water turned into blood. He killed people's sons. Like he really he stretched it out. Like he was creative. Like, there was levels to it, and I feel like we have to, if we're gonna think about God the Creator, we have to consider that that's actually kind of fire. That He has all of these visions, and when it comes to being punctual. God is on time. God meets these deadlines. He was like, I said, when Jesus was in Mary's womb, there was a star in the sky and it was on time. The wise and he meets the, the star to find Mary. All of these, and that's just one example. And I'm sure we could come up with all types of ways. He, he might not come when you want him, but he's always on time. And I think as God is, is the, I mean, yeah, 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 of course not. <laughs> We make the plans and the Lord laughs at us. Right. The Lord orders our steps. But I think when I think about, if I had to think about ways to describe God as a creative, I would choose these three words. When I apply it to myself, I think I'm super intentional. I think I always try to make sure things all tie together with some things. I try my best to have a little bit of range and working on the punctuality. Well, how would you guys describe our God as the creative? And no pressure. We could learn train. Nurturing creative. Speak on that. Um, I think, you know, he knows how to take care of his children. Sometimes when they don't need one. So if it means, you know, your friend bringing you into a space where there is a Bible study or a church mm -hmm. home, or if it is you sharing a sermon with your pair, 
um that random person is just like yeah i got you come on like my friend was telling me about a crazy story and i was like wow i'm your guy he really shows out for me so that just so scared me in your darkness you know, right? yeah, yeah um so i just say that like he's nurturing because he provides that sense of love that you may miss or oh, yeah. that Parent support that you're looking for. And when you say nurturing, I thought about like, you know, there's always Big Mama. Big Mama had a can of oh, a can of <laughs> can't see it. You know, but sometimes when you're in those dark moments, sometimes it's best not to see someone so that you're so vulnerable and mm-hmm. always latching on to them. Mm-hmm. But that nurturing aspect, I mean that you just know good. Like, yeah. When I think of someone that nurtures me, they're either a financial support or uh, physical support to me yeah. um, and when I, I look at God I, I just think about how much he's done for me and I, I haven't even physically seen the person mm. you know like you, you know, know that it, right but in my eyes <laughs> yes. like, you know how you see people you see this work that, that provides so much to like grounding and foundation to you it's like alright like you part of that team you part of that <laughs> team like I'm gonna give that. you that respect um, but another thing I would say is, as a word, to, he is creative, you know, you think about Noah's Ark, like how intentional he was, was to say, like, <laughs> add that, put that, yeah. this had to go there, yeah. and it's just like, all these things gotta come up, yeah. and you gotta make it, yes. you know, like, not yeah. telling what to bring, but you gotta create it too, and so, you know, he, he's a visionary creative. He's you know, a tutorial he, kind of guy. That's why Kanye and John is just about that because he's little. <laughs> so we'll get blown yeah, Not the K word. <laughs> so we have well, not the K word. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the nurturing creative. We have the creative creative. Mm-hmm. What about you? What about you, pastors? Any words? I think I think that God, the creative, is an avant garde type of creator. Yeah. You know, um, because a lot of the things that God gives us, it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the ways that people get from point A to point B, they don't make sense. But, you know, the beauty is really in the journey and not just destination. Mm-hmm. And when I think about creators who are um, out of the box, mm-hmm. trying to do things, the most exciting thing is to watch them in the journey of creating. Like, yeah, you can go to the art show after you, you can go to the concert, mm-hmm. but sit in the studio with them, right? Watching them paint, mm-hmm. just seeing mm-hmm. a blank canvas become something. Yeah, I think that God is the kind of creative that takes so much pleasure in the process mm-hmm. that that's you know, I think about you know, I love memoirs and I think about people write the stories of their lives, the things that typically jump off the page. That people remember are not necessarily the milestones, mm-hmm. not just the Nobel Peace Prizes or what have you. But it's those little like stories or narratives. It's that life of life. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I think that God takes delight in this canvas of just, you're not going to know where this is going to end Don't up. Don't worry about it. But it's going to be a beautiful journey. Yeah. And the thing that I've painted and curated for your life is going to be so, it's going to be something you would have never thought about. But it's gonna make sense when you get it. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, like the best artists, the best creatives. It may not make sense while they're on that pathway, but then once people catch it, they're like, how did I not see? Mm-hmm. Right. How could I have missed it? It was happening all along. <laughs> so, I mean, that's one of my favorite things. Makes those pictures. Yeah, the avant like garde, the creative. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is, this is. I know we always edit it, but they <laughs> Two words that come to mind for me are comprehensive and consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that God is not only concerned about people, um, because of God who creates other, who creates people and creatures, and disregarded those creatures would not be trustworthy. Uh, the scripture talks about everything that has breath praises God, and how God gets food to all in this season. So God creates all this stuff and takes care of all this stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, I love the scope of God's compassion like there and creating. And then consistent in the sense that, you know, it's a wonder that God isn't just, just through with all of us. You know, all of these 
All these prophets get said, and people listen, and they leave. Oh, and yeah. Other prophets get said, listen, and you know, it's got to fall away, and then you know, Jesus right. goes. And, you know, we follow Jesus most of the time. So. <laughs> yeah. Not all of us. That's fine. Very real. Who's saying? Comprehensive, mm -hmm. avant garde, nurturing, creative. Ooh, those are some good words. I, I'm happy that we can think about God in this light. Um, and you can just think about yourself, but like if you can use those words to describe you in your creative journey, we are not God. The phrase God we gave him is like, you know, <laughs> it is like. So what I love about God is. He is love, right? And if the scripture says, if we know in part, we see in part, then we got a little bit of this in us too, a little, yeah. just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. So um, I just want you to take those words that you chose to understand and see God as a creator and just, you know, write them in the heart and think about it in your own journey as a creator. So just wanted to touch base on that. Next slide, please. Um, this, so the, this will be it. Um, this will be into something that was mentioned in Hebrews 4. Um, in Hebrews 4, it references Psalm 95, verse 10 to 11. I'm going to read that. For 40 years, I loathed that generation and said, there are people who go astray in their heart, and they have not known one of the ways. Therefore, I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And the context of this, just like they've been doing for a while, the Israelites, the, Israel, the people of Israel, they were not following God's word. God told them to do something through Moses. They didn't listen to Moses. They did their own thing. And as the text says, that they were a people who went astray in their heart. So disobedience on a grand scheme of things is simply going astray in your heart and not knowing the ways of God. And in terms of this rest that we're talking about, what are some reasons why we reject rest? I think these reasons might come to us quickly because I'm guilty of rejecting rest sometimes. Um, why do we think God puts restrictions on our works and how do they work for our good? So we could go one by one, start with Pastor Andrew, but um, I think some reasons we reject rest is, like we said, it's something we got, it's a deadline we got to meet. There's something that we have to do. There's, it, there's a guilt Happening. There's a pressure happening. Um, and not to invalidate all those feelings, uh, but I think that God puts restrictions on our work so we don't suffer from the things that will never withdraw from us. We will suffer from guilt and, and shame of not resting all the days of our life if we don't put those restrictions, if we don't follow the restrictions that God has put on us doing the work. And they're far good, like I said, for us to be able to understand there's a difference between working all day, grinding all summer, grinding all night, and actually laying yourself down and having that rest. Um, but were there any reasons that I missed on to, as to why we might reject rest? Mm. As to Andrew. <laughs> Thank you for, for your word. Uh, you know, some, some um, Brother Nipsey also comes to mind. He has a song called God in All My Life, Sacrifice, Seven Pay the Price. Mm -hmm. And I think so often we associate suffering and rest that I have to just kind of suffer and work while it's day and like kind of like earn rest, you know, and, until I knock everything off my decision. So I think um, setting aside the idea that um, we have to, you know, kind of like shoulder a heavy load and be exhausted before we rest is um, one of the reasons. Rather than just saying, it would be nice to just go to sleep now. Mm -hmm. so, I'm happy you recorded this because I would like to hear that again. That was good. <laughs> the question on the table is what are the other reasons why we reject rest mm -hmm. or don't run towards rest? Um, I think that there's such a thin line between resting and being lazy. And I think that many of us don't want to be lazy, but we probably don't have vocabulary for what rest is. So it's oh, like, God. you know, there have been times in all of our lives where we just didn't feel like doing anything. Mm -hmm. And then perhaps we felt the repercussions of that, where man, if I wasn't, you know, lazy, if I wasn't just kind of laying around the house and not being attentive, I wouldn't have missed this opportunity. I wouldn't have missed this X, Y, Z. And so I think there's a part of rest that feels um, you said it already, like a war. But it is also another part of rest that feels so similar to 
um, slothfulness. Slothfulness, that's a great word, yeah. And so it's like, I don't want to be that, so let me do X, Y, and Z. And I think that that's, that's something really that we have to continue to confront, um, that there is a space between um, slothfulness, laziness, um, and then simply just rejuvenation and what, what is what we should all have access to. And I think that 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 line is tough to solve. Mm -hmm. I think I made a great point. <laughs> yeah, I and it kind of goes back to what you were sharing when you spoke about like as a culture, you didn't feel that there was a positive correlation to rest. Mm -hmm. Um I think to be completely honest, when you think of the culture shapers or the voices of the culture, they're not gonna be open about like the amount of rest they take. And how they have seasons mm -hmm. where they are really putting out, out like putting in hours and getting all this work done, but they take months. That's why they look like that. That's why they live the life that they live. Because they rest, they go and travel for months or two and do things like to rest, like not co-working, not virtually working, but like literally just traveling. So I think it's so important. I think as a culture if we're willing to be honest about the amount of rest that we're taking mm -hmm. ideally i probably wouldn't even be that comfortable with that oh yeah i don't mind. i sleep i love my sleep mm -hmm. because that could look like oh she's not working hard enough but i don't care mm -hmm. i don't care what you think because right. i know what i put in i know what i do um and you know having to speak about it today it's like no i like rest i like the person i am when i'm rested mm -hmm. versus a person that I only have four hours of sleep and I'm just like mm, running on fumes. Like, let me get some sun <laughs> Yeah. I'm tired. I'm you know, like I'm mentally tired because I've just put in so much. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have anything to give. So I think that when it comes to rejecting it, it's more so based in like the workload you may have mm -hmm. and the things that you've committed yourself to. That's why I think you made an important point was like setting realistic goals and that you can keep to a pace to like you know actually complete <laughs> i think a lot of people are like, oh yeah actually yeah. I got to do. Yeah. but it's like do you have to, mm -hmm. do you have an assistant do you have people else to get these yeah. things such and it helps you straight hello because <laughs> the other side of what you're talking about with people take less to be straight about it is because they can rest because they have help mm -hmm. so that's another thing and that goes into some of the inequality around when you don't have that you are less inclined to rest because what have we been saying as a culture forever? If I don't do it, who's going to do it? How's it going to get done? Right? right. So right. with that help, you know who's going to do it. Yeah. So you can rest easier. Right. You know? And being That's comfortable real. with outsourcing. I think as a culture, we just want to say we did it. Yeah, I said this. <laughs> and it's like, what about the team? Yes. Yeah. Who's really on this team yeah. to execute that vision? Okay. The 21st. Because <laughs> I think like that's one of the missing pieces from it is this like delegation, you know, like mm -hmm. being able to say, like, I can't do this. Who's gonna help me get this done? Yeah. We're just saying, I gotta just figure it out. It's just like figuring it out is not it's not our portion. <laughs> you want to stress yourself <laughs> out. <laughs> 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 But I bring up disobedience before we get to the actual, you know, life tips and stuff, because I want to be um, clear in saying that rejecting rest is disobedience. Mm -hmm. Rejecting rest is you turning back from the Lord and it requires repentance. The same way that repentance is to turn away from whatever you were doing that was not pleasing to God. Rejecting rest is disobedience in God's eyes. Rejecting rest is people who go astray in their heart. That decision that you made eternally saying, no, I'm not going to rest. That's you acting like you don't know our God's ways. Our God is a God that allocates his to-do list. He separates the time and then at a certain time he'll rest. So I bring up the disobedience to not, of course, not to shame anybody who might have who might have rejected rest at one point, but if we do want to live a life that's pleasing to God, we have to acknowledge that this also is the, is pleasing to God to for you to go lay down. It's pleasing to God for you to say it is good concerning all of your works and calling it a day. So this is why I brought up disobedience first, but we'll, we'll get to look at stuff. 
no. <laughs> so how do we enter the rest that God has promised us? Hebrews 4 talks about the rest that some people walked into because they believed and some folks didn't walk into because of their disbelief. The three ways we enter the rest that God, that God promised us is through trust, humility, and self-control. We enter the rest that God promised us through trust, humility, and self-control. Next slide, please. Trust. So in our previous slide, I mentioned Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for all your souls. But my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The only way to rest in full capacity is to trust whose hands you're leaving it to, your work, whatever it is, you have to trust who you're leaving it with. Hebrews 4 9 explains for us the Sabbath rest that remains for God's people. Half the battle is believing that God can provide rest from a season's work. If you don't think, if you don't believe, <laughs> if you don't trust God to give you that peace of mind, when you do lay down, it's not going to be real rest. Like PG said, right? If you don't honor the, if you are not pleased with your list, you're going to be laying down with your eyes open. My dad calls it being awake and asleep at the same time. Mm. And um, if you don't trust God, to answer the rest, you'll never really have the rest if, if you don't give him that exchange. Here in the scripture, Matthew 11, Jesus offers us an exchange for our burdens, for his easy and light burden. Do you offer your burden to God when it's time to lay it down? That's my question for you. It's a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer it now. But the trust, you need trust to answer the rest that God has promised us. Next, humility. You have to be humble. It takes a level of humility to enter God's rest. The scripture in Isaiah says 58 and 14, keep the Sabbath day holy. Do not pursue your own interests on that day, but enjoy the Sabbath and speak of it with delight as the Lord's holy day. Honor the Sabbath and everything you do on that day and don't follow your own desires or talk idly. Pride can get in the way of the rest that you are invited to participate in. The pride of life that convinces us that we can get it done ourselves. The urge to, do, to send one more email to write one more page to get one more hour of studying can expose you to pride. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. If our God, the, if our, if God our Father has taken a day to rest in all of his creations, why can't you? Do you trust that God can maintain your projects while you rest? Here when Isaiah says to keep the day Sabbath, to keep the Sabbath day holy, don't pursue your own interests on that day. When he mentions don't pursue your own interests, that means to humble yourself. Of course, you would like to, you, when you're assigned yourself rest, you would like to get things done, especially if you don't have the help. If I don't do it, who's going to do it? But that is pride almost to say, well, if I don't do it, who's going to do it? When we know that God is giving us permission to rest, God, is just, God has promised never to leave us, never forsake us. He's never going to let us go through any of these things alone. And if we tell ourselves that we cannot rest, that is telling you, that's basically saying unto yourself that only I can get this done. And we know that we can do all things only through Christ who strengthens us. So it, it takes a level of humility to say, you know what? I trust God to handle this and I'm laying my pride down and whatever I know I can do to lay it down to get this time for rest. Next, the third item that you, the third thing that you need to apply to your life to enter the rest that God has promised is self-control. Psalms 4 verse 8 says, I will take my rest on my bed in peace because you only, Lord, keep me safe. That means closing your laptop, turning off your emails, declining that call, submitting to rest with your body is vital to entering the rest God has promised us. We need our bodies to match our faith and submit to the promise of that rest. And so we lay our bodies down from whatever we're working on. Our hearts and mind cannot meet in full agreement with the act of that rest. You need self-control. <laughs> we can't rest if your body's not rested. It's, it's kind of quick math. I don't know how, how much further to describe it, but here in Psalms 8, if you, I'm sorry, Psalms 4, when you, if you read the scripture of Psalms 4, he's actually not crying out, complaining to God, but he's pouring out his distress to God. He's like, these people talking about me, this stuff got done, this stuff got done. And then it closes with, I will take my rest in my bed in peace because you alone will keep me safe. And I think that speaks to the self-control despite all of the madness happening, whatever's happening on your desktop, in your inbox, having that self-control to put your body down and then in peace. And I think that's what's most important. Take that rest on your bed in peace because the Lord will keep you safe. That's 1000% important. And um, 
in close, I mean, any any remarks? I guess I'll open up the floor because I was allowed to talk it and we've been talking all night. So this is good. I, I love your um, calling it out as students. Oh, well, yeah, it took a lot for me to, I had to say it to myself because I'm guilty of it, but I love it because in Hebrews 4, it also talks about how the word of God is living and active. So I'm just thankful that the word of God was really working through me through this Bible study. Um, but anyone else? No? So, um, I wanted to close the Bible study with this scripture here from Hebrews 4, verse 7. And it's the invitation of today. Today you are invited. Yeah. Um, the scripture says, since therefore it remains open for some to enter it, it being rest. And those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience. Again, he sets a certain day, today, saying through David much later in the words already quoted, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. And I think it's important for me to close out on this here verse because in the hoopla and the up and down and the restlessness of life, I think it's important that when you hear the voice of God, whenever it is, wherever it is, if you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit and you hear from the Lord and he's he today, if you hear this voice, do not harden your hearts to rest. I think, um, like Pastor Andrew mentioned with that Sabbath one, there might be a moment in your day and it might not be your designated Sabbath day, but if you hear from the Lord to take that devotional hour or to take a pause before writing that, that email, when today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Do not turn your heart away from what God is calling you to do. If God is calling you to go to the wellness room for 30 minutes in the middle of the workday, honor that because we don't know what's on the other side of the obedience of God. We do know what's on the other side of disobedience. The other side of disobedience, like it said here in Psalm 95, 10 to 11, they shall not enter my rest because of their disobedience. So in closing, I wanted to leave Hebrews chapter four, verse seven with you today. If you hear his voice calling you to enter the promise of his rest, do not harden your hearts, my fellow creatives. Bless the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thanks, thanks for the great thing. Praise the Lord. Um, but I, I wanted to start the whole, um, I wanted to start the series, this creative Bible study series with rest first, um, only because sometimes it's always prioritized. So that's why I wanted to start um, with rest on today. Um, do I just... Yeah, you can close. Clap for us, please. You can, you can close with some friends. If you're if you're attention to us. Yes. This is good. There you go. Very great. Oh, praise God. We should have Bible study in there with the pillows and then uh but somebody yeah. was in here when we started. Yeah. Now we don't next time. Yes. Yeah. To claim the fight. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yes, let us let us pray. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you for your promise, oh God. We thank you that your word is true. We thank you that your word is living, active, and it pierces through joint and marrow. It is real, oh God. We thank you for your that is everlasting. We thank you, oh God, for uh, this time that we spent talking about you, talking about rest, talking about this journey as creatives. Lord, we thank you for who you have created us to be. We thank you, O oh God, for the call that you have placed over our lives. We thank you, O oh Lord, that all of the days of our lives are written in the book. And on this day today, O uh, Lord, you wanted us to learn more about your rest, O oh Father God. Lord, um, have your Holy Spirit be with us. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is always with us, O oh Lord, but increase our faith so we know and are reminded and feel that we are never alone, O oh God. Lord, let us be sensitive to your voice, O Lord, when it speaks to us. Father God, be with us as we close out this Bible study on our way home. Grant us traveling mercies. For those who wanted to be here, who could not be here, Lord, be with them as well. Lord, we speak over um, all the creatives represented from the Double Love Experience Church. We, we, we think of all of the creatives who might be struggling with rest, struggling with ideation, struggling with brainstorming, struggling with finding a team, struggling with um, a cooperative team, struggling with delegation, struggling with writing, struggling with composition, struggling with all of the things. Oh, Father God, Lord, we, we lay those at your feet. We intercede for them right now, oh God that your Holy Spirit may move and obey, oh Lord, that we did not expect. We thank you that you are a nurturing God, the avant-garde God. We thank you that you are the comprehensive God, the consistent. Thank yeah. you for being a consistent God. Thank you for being the artist, the God, the artist. Lord, we bless your name. 
for you are everything to us and more, oh God. We bless your name. We thank you for all of this. In no other name but the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. You like to yeah. join the attention? Yeah. I'm glad. Glad. Yeah, no. Wanted to make it you know, a spectacle. Yeah.